one third of the Team Rocket trio. A character with the most tragic but most inspiring backstory in the Pokemon anime. Let's talk about Meowth. Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? Welcome back to Rocket Week, right here on the Chadu Chadu channel. Yesterday we took a look at Jesse's touching backstory. Today it's all about Meowth and tomorrow, well, your man James is coming down the chimney with a bag full of charisma and inflatable bodysuits. So be sure to hammer that notification bell right into the dust for your boy James Coon. So, Meowth the strange bipedal Pokemon who walks on two feet and carries out all kinds of crooked deeds for a mafia boss who he truly admires. But why is he the way he is and what can we learn from his backstory? On today's show, we will be exploring Meowth's tempestuous early years, his transformation, and an interpretation of what it all means with a little bit of extra embarrassing personal Charu Charu story time thrown in at the end. And as always, it will be a fun time, so kindly request Yermachoke to cross chop that like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe for more Rocket Mania, and let's jump in before I have to blink or use eye drops. There are things you don't know about me, things I like to keep private. While Jesse's backstory is very sad, Meowth's backstory is even more tragic and has some very valuable takeaways. So let's get to it. The first thing Meowth remembers about his life is turning up at Camp Pokehurst in a basket. Alone, familyless, friendless, homeless, with nothing but an empty heart, an empty stomach, and a hunger for survival that led him to even try and eat baseballs at the camp to survive, for which he was punished and left hanging from a tree. Not only was Meowth truly alone and starving, but even worse, he was alienated and despised by the people around him. And so his tale is truly one of an individual clawing their way out of hell on earth to make something out of themselves and ascend to a better life. One day, catching a glimpse of a seemingly wonderful world in which people really loved and cared for their Pokémon, Meowth left his miserable life at Count Pokehurst in search of this apparent promised land. Young, naive, and desperate, he set out to secure a brighter future. But little did he know that this promised land was little more than an illusion. When he arrived in Hollywood, he was rejected by the people in town and forced to survive by stealing scraps of food, eventually joining a street gang to avoid starving to death. It was at this time that he chanced upon another glimmer of hope in the form of Meowzy, a beautiful, I guess, female Meowth, who he fell for at first sight. However, she rejected him, looking down on him as nothing more than a dirty stray and expressing her preference for humans, or as we as viewers could see more clearly, the shallow comforts and luxuries that her wealthy owner could provide. Yes, it would seem that the Pokemon world is also full of jewel hunting leeches. Meowth is crushed by the rejection, but is so desperate for the first trace of affection in his miserable life that he does what he thinks he needs to do, become more human-like to win Meowzy's heart. And so, painstakingly, he teaches himself to walk upright on two legs like a human. As a result, he runs so much slower that he is caught and beaten time and time again. But in spite of this, he keeps at it. And with tremendous effort, he grinds away night after night to teach himself to speak like a human, emulating the speech of students in a classroom below his living quarters and poring over a small picture book. Time passes, he struggles, he struggles harder, and eventually comes out of these Herculean endeavors completely transformed as a bipedal talking Meowth, and all for a shot at lifting himself out of the darkness. But in the end, when he comes back to Meowzy, with newfound confidence and flowers in hand, having achieved the unachievable, 
She mocks him. She calls him disgusting. She derides him for becoming a freak halfway between Pokemon and human. She crushes his last shreds of belief in the goodness of the world. And it seems like all his work was for nothing. Or was it? In the midst of his despair, instead of crumpling inward like a pathetic milksop, as many would, his despair flares up into a fiery rage. A fiery rage that he harnesses as rocket fuel to blast off to a new life in which he takes his future into his own paws and leverages his newfound skills for the forces of, well, evil. Inspired by the first word he ever learned, he ends up joining Team Rocket, the shadowy organization led by a father figure who gives abandoned rogues a place to call home. And it's there that he meets Jesse and James, the friends he'd always longed for. As the Hollywood he left behind enters a deep recession and decays into a state of ruin. Meowth ascended from the abyss of loneliness and false hopes as a self-made self-starter with talents to spare, and while he may have joined the dark side, he did find a place where he belongs. And while he's not exactly thriving in his career, he is certainly getting by. And on that note, with Meowth able to mediate between people and Pokemon, it's kind of weird that Team Rocket is so focused on snagging a Pikachu with a middling battle record, when Meowth himself is probably infinitely more valuable. But Perhaps one day they will figure out how to monetize those skills and retire early. Well, Meowth is a misfit, a rogue, and in many ways a failure. But with grit and determination, he dug his way out of the depths to build a life for himself with really wonderful friends. And not just friends, but friends who are truly there for him when things go south. Meowth fought hard to get there, but in the end, he made it to where he needs to be. It's funny, but unlike Meowzy, who gloats about her position in the human world until she is ultimately abandoned by her owner when Hollywood implodes and realizes that she doesn't actually have what it takes to build anything for herself out of the shreds that remain, Meowth ends up actually excelling because of how horrible she is and eventually becomes more a part of the human world in some capacity than any Pokemon ever has. Whereas Meowzy was enraptured in the illusions of Hollywood until everything came crashing down, Meowth broke free of those deceptions and came out on top with real relationships, a home, and the love and sense of belonging that he had always been looking for. And it's all because even though his initial motivations were misguided, he put in the work to grind his skills keep pushing forward, and he never gave up, despite the pretty awful hands that life kept dealing him. So beyond the value of perseverance that we discussed in Jesse's backstory the other day, three big takeaways from Meowth's story are that number one, it's important to look past those grass is greener on the other side illusions and see things for what they really are. Number two, transforming yourself to fit a love interest's ideals is very foolish because a there's probably a disconnect between what you think they idealize and what they actually idealize b you're likely just being disingenuous with yourself about what you truly need from them if you actually need them at all and c the other person will very likely shatter the illusory benefits of your transformation or betray you in the end in some fashion or another if they this is all that your relationship is built on. And three, on a more positive note, regardless of the hardships life slings at you, if you continuously invest in your own skills and turn useless, destructive emotions like despair and self-pity into good rage, motivation, and rocket fuel to propel yourself forward, then you can absolutely better your position in life, just like your favorite bad cat. Meowth.
Meowth was quite lucky that he survived his missteps with regard to takeaways 1 and 2, but with the kind of grit and willpower that he had, it is little wonder that he was able to power through. And it's actually kind of amusing or embarrassing, but I actually find Meowth's backstory pretty relatable in a sense. Not the eating baseballs or getting turned on by cat thoughts stuff, but I had to stomach a somewhat similar lesson about not putting faith in illusions and the capricious nature of all the meowsies out there in the world about 10 years ago when I was in a serious, or at least what I thought was serious, lol, relationship with a nice girl and due to circumstances at the time she had to move back to her home country. We talked pretty seriously about the future and it seemed like we had the same intentions so I in the end decided to line up a job across the world in her home region and hammered down on learning a new language to make things work. And then eight months later, just as I was about to depart, out of absolutely nowhere, she told me that she wanted to break up. Isn't that just great? I thought. Actually, I thought, what the f is wrong with you? At this point, it was already too late to make any changes with regard to my employment arrangements, so I didn't have much choice but to embark on my somewhat misguided adventure that I had transformed my life for and try to make the most of it. And I was actually so incredibly pissed off at the time that I moved past the breakup pretty fast. And it all worked out in the end as I had a great time with what I was doing, developed some really great skills, and ultimately leveled up into a better version of myself on account of all this hilarity. But I guess that like Meowth, I was just lucky in that regard that I managed to make something out of my misguided endeavors. All I wanted to say with this embarrassing story is that you really do have to be on guard for these very convincing illusions. And if you're going to take a gamble on someone else's loyalty, then you better make sure that you are putting yourself in a good place where you're developing good skills and coming out on top and moving forward even if things fall apart. And if things do fall apart, just bust out some of that rocket fuel like your boy Meowth. <laughs> okay, that is all I wanted to say. Do join my $100,000 a month tier on Patreon if you want to enjoy the rest of that very funny, embarrassing, charu charu romance lol story. But how about you? Have you ever had a Meowth-like experience? Do you find Meowth's story inspiring or simply tragic? And do you want to hear more personal Charu Charu stories or do they fill you with disgust? I'm curious what you think. Well everyone, thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have a very healthy, happy, and safe day. Check back tomorrow for the final piece of the Rocket Extravaganza. Check out the video on Jesse's backstory do follow me over on Twitter. And with that said, as always, let's chat.